what open core means is you have a 90 something percent freemium code base that like hobbyists or small companies or startups can use for free. So Figma has a very interesting notion as well and a very interesting um, go to market where like every single player feature is free for yourself. But the moment you need to collaborate and you need to pull in your team, that's where, where you need to join an organization. You need to pay mm -hmm. for a seat. Multiplayer is where you pay a SaaS fee because right. that's where you have collaboration. And for Cal.com, it would be around Robin links and routing and team events and, and all that stuff and team availabilities and managing that. Me personally, I really like AppFra, like building free apps and selling infrastructure. Um, that's been really fun. Licensing wise, so it really depends on who you're selling to, right? Like if you sell, let's say, consumers and prosumers, I think what, from my experience, open source has been pretty hard because when you have a free product that just like does something very, very good for free, uh, it's pretty hard to convince like a consumer to upgrade to something pro-ish. I'm not a big fan of prosumer anyway in the long term. So as long as you find a way to have a free product and but also build a really strong kind of like enterprise muscle and you understand what the enterprise like larger corporations need, um, they most likely never are happy with a free only product. They always need more support and, and SOC 2 and compliance and uh, custom integrations. And I try to get like six figure deals coming in very early, you know, like starting at like a hundred something, maybe 75 K in the beginning, going up to like 150 or so. Um, and you also need to really be comfortable, comf com uh, confident in your product that maybe you raise some funding and you have some runway, but like, I would rather start the enterprise or like, you know, six figure sales muscle earlier than later. Because you need to learn so much as a founder that like if you postpone it, you just postpone your learning and you probably get a ton of rejections initially, but at least they reject you because of the price or maybe because you're not like early enough. And then that way you just reach back to them a year later and say like, hey, listen, like we're one year older, we're still growing and, and we are 20% cheaper now because of X, Y, Z. Uh, or maybe you're more expensive because we have more features, right? Um, so as long as they reject you based on like you're not old enough and you're like um, too pricey or so, that's good reasons. If you want to be rejected because your product is shit, right? And then you make your product better. Um, but if that's the two reasons, I wouldn't like, yeah, I would just go for enterprise way, way earlier than others. Yeah. If you have a commercial open source product that makes sense for that market, right? We've never really invested time to see if they actually have a license or not. As I said before, the large companies don't violate and the small ones you don't charge. Um, there's probably a, a ton of people that we don't charge, like probably. But the, the total amount of revenue is, is neglectable to like a single enterprise deal that we close. I think I saw a, I think I saw a, a statistic from from GitLab's um, last quarter, or maybe two quarters ago, where like 90-ish somewhat percent came from like the top 1% of customers and the rest of the 10% came from the rest of the 90 or something, maybe 80, 20. I mean, typical Pareto stuff, but that was really like unsurprising to me um, how to me, they are only as successful in the developer space because of all the brand and, and also all the improvements done by the community, by the consumers, right? So for us, we, we didn't start selling the infrastructure to larger companies before we had like a million bookings done by consumers, right? And so we were comfortable saying like, okay, whatever we sell to a business will work because of we've tested almost every edge case. Um, and so if you have a pure developer product, and you're only selling to developers, I think you're also only charging developers. And so that's something which I find very interesting as an industry. Um, me personally, I really like AppFra, like building free apps and selling infrastructure. Um, that's been really fun. Click, um, does that mean like really like technically you have like closed repos that cover those features and then you kind of need to plug everything together from an engineering point of view, you kind of need to uh, deploy everything separate as like microservices or something like this yeah it's a great question we actually had a similar one last time we talked so um the best way to go over this is we have a top level license from a like a license point of view that says 
um, everything is AGPL unless the content in these folders, right? And you have these. Right, right, right. Okay. And, and you have these these commercial enterprise edition EE folder. And so if you go into one of these folders, A, you'll see a different license. You'll also see a different readme. So you have like this enterprise edition and you can get a license key very easily. And then there's a license that is a commercial license. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, so yeah. so technically it's it. source available, but it's not open source, which is also great for security audits. It's all public. Um, but it's, and as you can see, you know, we have managed team events, we have organization, we have impersonations. Um, we have teams, we have workflows. So it's, it's very easy to also take a look at the code base and see, oh, okay, I understand what's, uh, what's commercial. What's yeah. Not. Do subscribe again. There's uh, more coming next week. Uh, I think next week. Um, and yeah, have a follow on Algora. Thank you for hosting us. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Take care. Everyone. All right.